Over the next two weeks, I'm going to be making my way south, to the end of the world, to the frozen continent, Antarctica. Antarctica is almost 10,000 miles from the UK and it's the least visited continent in the world. In this series, I shall be traveling through South America, crossing the infamous Drake Passage, keeping an eye out for incredible Antarctic wildlife and showing you what it's like on board an Antarctic cruise ship. Hey, it's Dan from the Not Snowman and welcome to my Antarctica videos. I've just checked into the Hilton in Buenos Aires after a 14 hour flight from Amsterdam and I've still got another four hours to go to Ushuaia on a flight tomorrow morning. We've got to get up at half four in the morning for breakfast and the coach is leaving at half five. So I've got a day today in Buenos Aires. I've just passed my COVID test, which was a massive relief and I'm going to explore the city centre now. So let's go. Lonely Planet describes Buenos Aires as sexy and alive, a city that will definitely get under your skin. This red building is Casa Rosado and is the official office of the Argentinian president. The president's office sits in Plaza de Mayo, which is the oldest square in the city. I've come down to the colourful area of La Boca and this is Caminito and it's one of the most colourful streets in Buenos Aires. It took us about 15 minutes in a taxi, it cost us 5 US dollars um, from our hotel in the city centre. Just look at this place, it is stunning. La Boca has been on my bucket list for a while and it definitely needs to be added to yours too. La Boca translates as mouth in Spanish and it used to be the mouth of the city as it was located right next to the main port. La Boca hasn't always been so colourful and it wasn't until the late 1960s that artist Benito Quinquilla Martin painted one abandoned street and the rest of the neighbourhood then followed. Today the area is one of the city's major tourist attractions, it's packed full of restaurants, tango performances and markets selling souvenirs to take home. A street called Caminito, which translates as Little Path, is one of the most famous in the area. This colourful cobbled street is lined with artists selling their work. One face that you can't escape in La Boca is that of Diego Maradona. Maradona played for Boca Juniors on two separate occasions. You'll even find a cafe dedicated to Maradona, which is somewhat of a shrine to his footballing career. Had a great first day in Buenos Aires, I'm really looking forward to coming back at the end of our trip to Antarctica. But for now, it's bedtime, it's only 8 o'clock, but obviously yesterday was a hell of a lot of travel. And tomorrow we've got to be up at half past four for breakfast and then the buses are leaving to take us to the airport at half past five. So we can take our flight to Ushuaia, which is about three and a half to four hours further south of Buenos Aires. And then we'll join our ship to take us into Antarctica. Good morning, it's very early here in Buenos Aires. The 4 a.m. alarm has just gone off, but that means four o'clock alarms mean that you're going on an early morning flight. So this morning we're flying from Buenos Aires down to Ushuaia, which is the most southern city in the world, to join our Hurtigruten cruise, which will be taking us into the Antarctica. So we're taking a chartered flight, which will leave at half past seven. So here goes. After checking out my room, I packed a brown paper bag full of pastries, ready for the journey south. 10 coaches are outside of our hotel to take us to Ezeza Airport, which is the main airport in the city. World Cup fee was in full flow and our passports were checked by a gentleman in an Argentina shirt. Are you going to win today? I hope so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Finger girls. Finger girls. I'll lose to England in the final though. Oh! Yeah. <laughs> I like it. Two aircraft are waiting for us at the airport to take us south. Aerolinas Argentinas, the country's biggest airline, were the provider of our charter. I'd seen a hack on TikTok of how to record a hyperlapse for an aircraft's takeoff. I pushed my phone behind the window visor and this is the result that I got. Our flight took us south down Argentina's southern Atlantic coast towards Tierra del Fuego, the land of the fire. Tierra del Fuego is the southernmost tip of mainland South America. We landed in Ushuaia's tiny airport, which is the southernmost international airport in the world. Welcome to Ushuaia or Phila del Mundo, the end of the world. This is the most southern city in the world and in Argentina. We'll be catching our ship here to go towards Antarctica. The first piece of wildlife that I spotted was an elephant seal flicking gravel onto its back. Ushuaia is packed full of southernmost claims, but I won't bore you with any more. 90% of Antarctic tourism passes through Ushuaia. Ushuaia is one of five gateway cities to Antarctica, with the other four being Punta Arenas in Chile, Cape Town in South Africa, Hobart in Tasmania and Christchurch in New Zealand. The end of the Andes forms the backdrop for the city, with snow-capped mountains surrounding it. Not only is Ushuaia a gateway to Antarctica, it also has plenty of outdoor options to offer, from hiking, sailing, skiing, kayaking and even scuba diving. Unfortunately, we were only there for the morning. 
For lunch, I opted for a local delicacy. That was a king crab stew. Whilst I was eating my lunch, arch rivals Brazil got knocked out of the World Cup and the restaurant erupted. <laughs> After dinner, it was time to board our ship, the MS Fridjof Nansen, who sat proudly in the harbour. We boarded the ship just before 4pm, with the ship departing at 7. The ship is the latest of the Hurtigruten Expeditions fleet, having been launched in 2020. The ship itself is named after the Norwegian explorer, scientist and Nobel Prize winner Fridjof Nansen. It's built over 11 decks and can host 530 passengers. My cabin was a polar outside cabin on deck 4. As you can see from this clip, I had a large bed and a living area with a window to look out of. Next time I crossed the infamous Drake's Passage, the roughest sea in the world. Our ship is joined by over 100 humpback whales whilst crossing the Drake, which is an oh, incredible great, sight. Great the back. I'll also give you a full tour of this beautifully modern ship and show you what's on each deck and the activities you can participate in. The ship boasts three different restaurants, a swimming pool, hot tubs, a lecture theatre, a gym and a sauna just to name a few. If you enjoyed this video don't forget to like and subscribe and join me on the next video as we continue this journey south.